Hey everyone, this is Grace from Kapwing, and today I'm going to show you how you can make your own Bitmoji virtual classroom, starting with a free customizable template. As remote learning and distance learning becomes the norm for next semester and potentially future semesters, it's becoming more important to connect with students in different ways. Creating your own Bitmoji classroom or your own virtual space for students to see and for you to connect with them is a fun way to do this. Creating these classrooms can be a tedious process. I've seen a lot of other tutorials where they are starting in Google Slides, jumping between different applications or tools just to remove the background from images or just to gather images. But we tried to make this process a lot easier for you by creating a template that you can just click and go in, add your own Bitmoji, add whatever else you want, or just leave it as it is, and then click publish and download that file. This template is free and online, and it makes creating multiple of these rooms really easy. To go to the template, click the link at the top of the description below, and I'll meet you in the Kapwing editor and we can start making our classrooms. All you have to do to start is click make it. And it'll take you to this editor where it's the exact template that was in the preview. So anything in this template is editable. So if you click anything in here, you can see that it's just one of the layers. You can move it around or delete it or add more things. To see all the layers in the image, you can just click outside the canvas and all these things on the side are layers. So if you select one, it'll highlight which one, which layer that is in the photo. So for example, if I want to change the background color of the canvas, so the wall color, I just select the canvas itself and then go to the background color and you can select whatever one you want. You can add text. So for example, if you want the whiteboard to be the agenda for the day, you can add text here and resize the text box. And then you can change fonts over here, then resize it and you can math. You can change where it is on the page, um, size, text color, text background. Um, yeah, so those are lots of text options that you can use. In terms of adding images, so this is a pretty used function for making these classrooms because that's the basis of the whole classroom. So these are all images that I found within the Kapwing search. So every single item in here was just found from this images tab. And you can search for anything. The, res the results are sourced from Google. And I would recommend if you want specifically those like PNGs that don't have backgrounds or white borders, search for uh, use search terms that include PNG or transparent, something along those lines. So for example, if I wanted like book shelf, bookshelf PNG, the ones that are actual PNGs are show no background. So even though this has that transparent PNG background, if you click it and add and add it, it's still going to have the checkered background. So it's a little, con it's a little misleading, um, but it makes it really obvious when the, you actually have a PNG. So bookshelf PNG. So yeah, this one's a PNG. This is a PNG already. These are PNGs. But even if you find one that isn't a PNG, so even if you see one you like with this checkered background, you can still, within Kapwing, you can still erase all of this. Um, another thing, when you're resizing photos, you if you just resize, you can see that it will start to cut off some of the image. If you don't want that to happen, just click lock ratio on the side and then it will, um, it will resize proportionally. It might take a second, but eventually the erase button will be clickable. So I'm just gonna select this photo that I just brought into my classroom and then hit erase. And this is the, where you can make PNGs or basically just erase backgrounds or things you don't want in images. So we have a magic wand tool and an erase tool and the sensitivity can change. So it magic wand is selected right now and that's going to select areas that are similar to each other in hopes of erasing the background. So for example, if you click and drag, it will highlight different areas that it thinks are similar. So and anything selected within the dotted lines is 
you can delete is selected and you can delete. So if I highlighted, if I clicked and dragged this section, all of this out here, if I hit delete right now, that would all be deleted. So what the dragging does is it changes the sensitivity. So on the side, you can see that the sensitivity bar is like altering as I'm clicking and dragging, but you can also manually select it. So if I, that's like the lowest sensitivity and only selects that square. So I'm just gonna increase it a little more. So I just clicked and dragged that. That is pretty good. It, it uh, highlighted almost all of the area I don't want. So I'm just gonna hit delete on my keyboard now and it deletes all of that. So you can just continue doing this with sections that you don't want. You can also just freehand erase. So click erase and then just erase lines, but be careful with this one. And you can also change the eraser size. So this is pretty nice because I've seen other tutorials with the Bitmoji Classroom and you have to like go to another website and for every single, for every single image you want to use, you have to kind of like erase the back, you have to put it into that website and erase the background. So it's helpful to have all these tools within the studio in reach. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. I'm just gonna hit done and it brings up the final product. So I'm gonna delete this bean bag and so I can put my shelf here. That looks pretty good, I like it. And then if you want to move layers around, so for example, this potted plant is should be in front of this shelf, you can use these tools on the side. So you can click the shelf and then hit send backward. And you might have to do this a couple times, but eventually it'll send it behind the layers you want. So there we go. So then I'm gonna bring this plant forward. Another thing you're probably gonna wanna make your own is your Bitmoji. Uh, to get your Bitmoji on your computer, you first, first of all, you have to make a Bitmoji account on your phone. So download the Bitmoji app and make an account, make your Bitmoji. Then there's a Chrome extension that you can use. That is the Bitmoji Chrome extension. And I'll put the links in the description for them. You just install that. It's very simple. And then once you have that Bitmoji extension, you can just find it in Chrome. So click it. And this brings up every Bitmoji that you could possibly want. So um, one tip that I've discovered for getting these like kind of plain emojis or Bitmojis, getting the plain Bitmojis is searching pose. So this will just mostly be the Bitmoji itself. And another one that's kind of fun is chill. So this one, there's a coffee one. There's, oh, there's like cat, reading with a cat. I'm pretty sure there was a bean bag one too, somewhere. Yeah, this one, that one's kind of fun. So I'm gonna choose this, this bean bag reading Bitmoji. What you're gonna do to bring it into Kapwing, the easiest way is to select, right click it and say open image in new tab. And that'll open the, the just the image in the tab. What you wanna do now is just select the URL, copy the URL, and then in Kapwing, you can hit upload and then paste the URL. And there we go, it brings up the Bitmoji. So I'm gonna lock the ratio again and then resize it down. And as you can see, there's the white background to this. So we can just quickly make that a transparent image. I'm gonna delete my old Bitmoji um, and by clicking erase and then magic wand and it selects basically all the part I don't want. And just hit delete and also select the borders. Sweet, so then click done. And there we go. There's the Bitmoji reading. So obviously do this with your own Bitmoji. Uh, you can even add your students or whoever else you want into your classroom. In terms of bringing in images of furniture, so for example, this couch is facing the front and so is the shelf, which is nice because it looks it coherent with the rest of the room. Um, if you searched like desk, you could get a lot of different orientations. Like you, if you included this photo, it probably would look less like a virtual classroom. 
So you want something that faces the front and a, a, a good tip, something that I found that is pretty useful is just searching, whatever you search, add the word front at the end. So if I said desk front, it tends to bring up images that are where the furniture is facing front. So yeah, like a lot of these desks now are this the right orientation, which is useful. And if I click that, it would bring it in immediately. And I don't even have to do anything. That's pretty cool. Another thing that you can do is if you want to upload pictures, you can just click to upload them here or paste the links. So this can work for most anything if you can't find it in the image search. search. We also have an emojis tab, so that can be fun just to have around. You don't have to be limited to images actually in this editor. You can, we, Pipwing is capable of making videos and GIFs as well. So for example, if you wanted to bring in a GIF and then output it as a GIF, output this file as a GIF, that's possible. So I'm gonna search for a GIF, for a GIF that's fun to just have on the shelf or something. So this GIF is kind of cute with this llama. I'm gonna just resize that down and just put it on the shelf here. So obviously if you save this as a picture, that GIF won't be moving, but what you can do to output this whole file as a GIF is click settings and then output GIF. And then you would just hit publish. So I am pretty happy with this now. I'm gonna just go ahead and finish up and to, to be able to download the final product, you can just go click publish. Right, so my classroom is now finished loading. This is the final product. And as you can see, this little, it's kind of small, but this GIF is actually still moving. So this will download as a GIF. Obviously you didn't have to download it as a GIF. If you just had static images, it would have just downloaded as an image. To save this file to your computer, you can just go ahead and click download here and it will download that file. If you want to edit it again, so for example, if you wanted to change your classroom up, uh, you can just hit edit and it'll take you right back into the editor. But if you want to make a different type of classroom, so for example, this is your like homeroom and then you want to make an art room or another room, you can always just hit make a copy. You'll start with this exact image, which you can then go and edit further. And if you want to send this to other people, um, you can just hit copy link and share this link and it'll take them to this exact page as well. So a lot of people use Google Slides to make their virtual classrooms interactive. So I'm just gonna show you that really quickly. So I have a Google Slides presentation opened. This is just a blank slide and I'm gonna just upload this GIF. So I'm just gonna drag and drop it into here and you can see that it's still a GIF. I'm just gonna resize this. And then to make the text interactive to include hyperlinks or other elements, you can just hit text box. Let's say, watch this video today. Obviously you'd link your video. Um, I'm just gonna copy the link for some random thing just to show you that it can hyperlink. Um, and then hyperlink that and there you go. So you can always just make the templates or the virtual classrooms in Kapwing using that template and then just quickly add in uh, the hyperlinks to whatever you want to make it interactive in Google Slides. Once you have this classroom file, it's a lot easier to just add it to different places. So if you had made it all in Google Slides, all of these images would still be their individual components, which is kind of unwieldy when you're trying to transfer it between places, share it with other people. So like you can just re-drag that same file and it'll make that slide anywhere. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful for you, everyone. If it was, give it a like. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments and we'll see you in the next video.